Hey guys, Motocon out here, and today I'm gonna make a video on how to um, find a misfire that's really, really tough to uh, diagnose. Okay, over here we got a four cylinder engine. Okay, comes in with a, a misfire on number four cylinder. Now, the logical thing that the owners do, they replace the plugs, then the coils, you know, they, um, they check, uh, uh, the fuel injector, make sure that the, 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 you with the Noid light, make sure it's blinking and all of that. They did all of that and still was misfiring on number four. So what I did is I verified that and sure enough it was, I'm talking misfiring like it's a dead miss. I have a video on dead miss if you want to see that. It's a constant miss. It doesn't go away. All right, that's what this car has. So... I checked up. I checked the uh, the spark plugs, you know, verified it again, make sure that they were good, and they're fine. Coils are fine. Switched them around, and basically, I was I was coming to the conclusion that they were that you know it wasn't the ignition or the fuel. So, what I noticed now, when I did a this car was running, and then it would run good. Sometimes it would run bad. Sometimes it would run good. He told me that, and he says usually when it's hot. So I'm like, okay. So I checked, I checked uh, com cylinder compression. That's the first thing I usually check. Well, besides spark plugs, switching the coils around, then I, I, I stop what I'm doing and I go right, instead of fuel injection, which they could be hard to switch the injectors around, I go to compression. So it's important that they say you do uh, a cylinder compression test hot. No, it's not. You do it cold and hot, and this video is gonna tell you why. Now, uh, the time belt was replaced on this car, and no valves were replaced. Nothing like that was replaced. It, the other mechanic said it looked good. Okay, so I verified timing. Timing is pretty much on. So when I got the car and it was hot, I did a compression test. I had 150 straight across. 150, 151, 150, and I think that had 149, the, the cylinder number four. 149 is, is, is no problem. That's, that's not a compression issue. So then I'm, coming, and then I'm thinking to myself, all right, maybe it's a computer issue. But computers rarely ever go, and I did see it. I did have the Noid light on it, and it was working. It was firing the injector. I hear the injector clicking. I took the spark plug out, and spark plug is wet. So... And I know I have fuel, I have good fuel pressure. And the only thing I wasn't too sure about was the spray pattern of the injector. I also have another video on that, if you want to watch that. Anyway, so, so what I did is I let the car sit overnight. All right, and then I rechecked the compression and now it had 120, 120, 120, and then 30. So there's the problem, bingo, you have you have low compression on a cold engine. When it's hot, it had normal compression. So that really narrows it down a lot. So it's either the rings are worn or the valve is, it was, is sticking. It's a little bit. And being that the timing belt was replaced because it snapped, I'm guessing it hit one of the valves. And when they took it, I mean, when they put the timing belt on, they, you know, I guess they come, I don't know what they did, and th it had this problem, but in the meantime, they were cranking and cranking, the car was getting warm, and all of a sudden, it would run good. All right, so, so now, here's what I do. It's ice cold, okay? I'm gonna hook, hook, the, hook up the gauge and show you. So now, as you can see, I had 90 PSI, and it dropped down, and we're, we're almost 100% leakage. So, ah. Uh, let me wait for the compressor to go off. Now, immediately I can hear something. Now, I'm at top dead center on compression stroke on number four. I put the, um, the gauge on there, the leak down tester, and, I'll re oh, and what you do, you listen. Now, you hear it, right? You also hear it coming out of number two spark plug hole watch. Hear that? You go, oh, it's a head gasket. Not, no, it's not. Not really, because first of all, it's not adjacent. And second of all, the firing order is one, three, four, two. So four is on compression. Uh, number two is next to come up, and it's still, the valve is open. So air is leaking out. Listen to this. 
You hear it leaking out of there? So that means it's the intake valve. Because that's the intake. Okay? So what it does, it's leaking out of the intake valve a lot, that it goes in the intake and it comes out whatever valve is, is getting ready to, uh, to close, which is number two. Like I just said about the firing order. So that's a tip. Don't assume, oh, you got a head gas, good, because you replace it for nothing. Okay, when I close it, it's even more so that it comes out of here. Hear it? Now, when you close these two off, you listen in the crank, which, which another possibility could have been rings, the rings. That'll do it too. But it's hard to tell, but I close them off and you hardly hear nothing. You're gonna hear very little bit and like there's nothing. So it's not the rings. The rings can do that too. When the rings are cold, uh, when they expand, they get hotter, hotter. I mean, they expand when it's hotter, it's gonna create the compression and that, that's why the car's gonna run better and have compression when it's hot. Another one you look, you look in the overflow tank, if you see any bubbles, if it has a radiator cap, your vehicle, you open it and you see if you see any bubbles, nothing. So we know it's not a head gasket, all right? We know it's not the it's not the uh, the rings because the the crankcase has no air pressure, and then what you do has no air sound, no 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 uh, air leakage, and you go back to the exhaust which is under here, and you listen, there's nothing coming from here. So, what makes sense to me is that when the valves, when the, when the timing belt or chain slips or jumps or breaks, the first thing it's gonna bend is the intake valves because they're bigger, okay? So what my, my guess is that when they replace the timing belt, Okay, they said they took the head off because they were assuming the valves are bent and the va they said all the valves are fine. My guess is one of the valves is bent just enough that when they gave it a look, or I guess, that I don't know what they did, I can't speak for somebody else, is the valve is just slightly bent enough that it's sticking and then when it heats up, the valve guide expands just enough and the lubrication makes it open and close again and the car has compression and it runs good. When it sits, the metal contracts, it sticks again, you start it up, you got that dead misfire. All right, that's a complicated one to fix. You know, a lot of people are gonna jump and start replacing all kinds of parts on here. But when you know how an engine works, a little basic engine, whether it's in a little Kia or if it's in a Rolls Royce, they all work the same, okay? So I thought I'd send this, yeah, it's still making noise. I, I still have it hooked up, take that off. Okay, so if you have uh, a misfire that is not the common uh, ignition, plugs, coils, it's, you're switching fuel injectors and it's still doing good and you, do, and you check the compression hot because uh, everybody's telling you to check it hot and you've got good compression, you're going to run out around in circles. All right, you got to check. This is my, my point of the video is you got to check compression, cold, and hot, both. So when you're diagnosing and you have a hot engine that just came in, all right, wait, overnight, it has to be overnight cold, and then you check it cold. The, sure, the compression is going to be a little less, but it ain't going to be 30 and then jump up to 150. That's just not going to happen uh, and expect it to run. All right, guys, motor car nut, just watch it out for you guys. Please subscribe, hit the like button. If you, if you learned something from the video, hit a super thanks. I would really appreciate it. Keep the channel going, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much.